When it comes to an endurance race car such as Jota Sports Arika LMP2 car, getting reliability out of the car over a 24 hour endurance race is key. Doesn't matter how fast the car is, if it doesn't make it to the finish line, you've got no chance of winning. And of course in order to do this, the electronics package of the car becomes increasingly important. We thought we'd take the opportunity here to go through that electronics package and look at what is actually involved at running an LMP2 car. This starts with the Cosworth MQ12 ECU which is in control of the Gibson 4.2 litre V8 engine that produces around about 600 horsepower. The ECU includes all of the usual functionality that you'd expect at a professional motorsport ECU at this level including traction control, closed loop fuel control and the ability to run a pit limit and full course yellow limiter. What we can see is that the ECU is also fitted with Autosport connectors and this is one of the drives to improve reliability here over the cheaper plastic connectors that we're more likely to see at the hobbyist and enthusiast level of motorsport. Next up we've got the Cosworth IPS32 power distribution unit. So this replaces the conventional fuses and relays that we'd normally find in a car and instead it uses solid state electronics to control the power supply to all of the different circuits on the car. Now this provides an improvement in reliability and it also provides some functionality where certain circuits can be set with fusing levels and if the fuse is popped electronically it can be automatically reset. This means that you don't have to pull into the pits or pull over on the side of the track and physically replace a fuse and this can be a huge advantage in terms of reliability if you've got a system that's not quite functioning correctly even if corrective action is required this can be enough to allow you to limp the car back to the pits. Both the power distribution unit and the Cosworth ECU interface with both the steering wheel as well as the keypad that's located in the cockpit. That steering wheel acts as a driver display, in this case there's an integrated Cosworth display and shift light module as well as all of the controls that are fitted to the steering wheel which allow the driver to control different aspects of the engine operation. It also allows simple aspects such as a radio to communicate back to the pit. Of course on the back of the steering wheel there are also so the paddles which are used by the driver to select upshifts and downshifts. Simplifying the wiring greatly is the fact that all of these components communicate via CAN. For the likes of the steering wheel and the CAN keypad placed in the cockpit, this means that they only require four wires in order to operate power, earth, CAN high and CAN low. So this again simplifying the wiring, harness installation and improving reliability. When the driver requests a shift with those paddles, the information is then communicated to a separate gearbox control computer and this has an integrated air compressor because the gearbox shift is pneumatic. Now the compressor feeds a separate reservoir and the gearbox control unit looks after maintaining the correct air pressure in that reservoir. When the shift is requested the air pressure is fed back to an actuator that's fitted on the gearbox. When the shift is requested this is completed via a separate actuator assembly that's fitted onto the X-Track 6 speed transaxle at the back of the car. The last electronic component here is the electronic power steer control. So this is controlled via the steering wheel adjustable knob that allows the driver to control the amount of additional assistance that is delivered. This allows the car to be tuned to suit the driver's preference as well as the specific track that the car is racing on. And one aspect that's important to mention here is that as with every other aspect on an LMP2 car, the electronics components are lifed. This is a reliability aspect all of the components are given a race kilometre life and after that life has been used up the components need to be replaced. This might seem dramatic to us at the enthusiast level, particularly when we're dealing with literally tens of thousands of dollars worth of electronic components. However, the reliability advantage in knowing that all of the components will make it to the end of a 24 hour race is worth the expense. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.